Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is episode number 76 of Pop Culturally Deprived, and today we're going to be talking about Dumb and Dumber on your, no, it's a cardigan, but thanks for noticing, podcast. I'm Mandy Kay. I'm Brandon Size. And I'm Jazzy Bentley. And as you may have noticed, Matthew isn't here this week. He just got married, so he is off taking a break for his honeymoon, which means I am in charge all by myself. And that's why we (laughs) are now talking about one of the dumbest movies ever created. Matthew, you should never have done this. (laughs) Now, now, now. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah, Matthew should probably come back pretty soon. That's all I got. I'm, I'm sure Matthew is sorry that he missed this movie because, you know, one of his favorites, right? We're sorry, Matthew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Mandy, it sounds like you absolutely love this movie. I just, I want to know why you never watched this. It's 20 years old. Come on. <laughs> Mandy doesn't do stupid humor or <laughs> whatever it is that you call this next level <laughs> stupid humor because I like stupid humor now. <laughs> This is not you... that. I don't know what you call this. <laughs> so years ago, when when this came out, it was ninety four, I believe. Like, what was? Did you also not do stupid human humor back then? Like, even in your? Oh no, not at all. Oh okay, not at all. Uh, I mean, I didn't like Saturday Night Live. I didn't like Will Ferrell. I didn't like anything. I think I I had seen a few of the early Jim Carrey movies, um, but I wasn't a huge fan just because I was I was. I was too classy for that, okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, and I, I think I may have established that I was not. <laughs> yeah, and even this this came out the same year as, as The Mask and Ace Ventura. And Ace Ventura was definitely up there on the dumb level, and, and The Mask yeah, may have been more... Yeah, that was the stupidest of stupid humor. More physical comedy, but like... I. I seem to remember Ace Ventura being like over-the-top hilarious, and then Dumb and Dumber being his second movie really um like oh there's him doing that thing again but more stupid (laughs) (laughs) i feel like i liked the mask because i liked cameron diaz right and it did have a lot more like physical stuff going on that was and there was a dog to the eye there was a dog And, and honestly there was more of a plot to the mask than there was to dumb and dumber or to ace ventura even (laughs) well Now, that's a strong statement. (laughs) Well, I'm trying to remember what middle school me thought. So I haven't seen the mask (laughs) since I was in middle school. So, All right. Well, Dumb and Dumber is a buddy comedy starring Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. Released in December of 1994, it opened number one, earning $16.4 million that weekend. It went on to earn more than $247 million worldwide and also cult status among fans. Written by the Farrelly brothers, it was also their directorial debut. The success of this film launched their career and solidified Jim Carrey's. There was also an animated TV show, a 2003 prequel, and a 2014 sequel. God help us, why? <laughs> okay, I actually didn't remember there was an animated TV show. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow, that I'm gonna. That's horrifying. I've <laughs> seen <laughs> more of that than I have seen of the prequel or the sequel. That's also horrifying. <laughs> wow, I'm learning a lot about you today, Brandon. <laughs> well, I haven't watched those other Rethinking. ones. So <laughs> I, I actually haven't seen. I should go on record i haven't seen the other two either but um wow animated tv show that's pretty great that was the thing to do back then for sure it was it was yeah absolutely I don't remember these things oh. okay well you need to re-listen Wasn't... to the ghostbusters episode of this year <laughs> fine show oh okay well that was one of those early ones the first one i listened to actually um so i had noticed that this was the fairly brothers feature debut is that correct yes okay and I'd also seen a note somewhere that the original screen pr- screenplay of this was written by John Hughes, which just does not sound correct to me. <laughs> I'd be curious to see where you found that because it wasn't in the Wikipedia page, which of course I doesn't an mean IMDb anything. IMDb junkie, so. yeah. <laughs> I found it on IMDb, uh, and there's also a note right next to that that says that John Hughes made a deal with the Fairley brothers to basically just strip his name from the project. Uh, including the script. Uh, I didn't double check or go deeper on this. It's just what IMDb told me. 
I saw that uh, while I was watching on Amazon Prime, I clicked on a little link that said that the original script was so bad that absolutely no one would bite off on it. And they did a rewrite and they scrubbed the name of the script itself off and put a different name under so it could get cleared <laughs> and then switched it back to Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> Believable? So many wonderful things we're learning about. <laughs> yeah. So apparently in the biography of John Hughes, it does say that it began life as a John Hughes script. Okay. So I think that is actually true. That's incredibly interesting. I'm, I, I don't see John Hughes anywhere in this script, but... I'm going to guess the characters and like the idea came from him, and then after he sold it to the Farrelly's, they rewrote it. That's <laughs> going to be my guess. <laughs> Maybe that's why... I, I think it's... <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think it's safest for all of us to just assume that. <laughs> I might have I was going to say, maybe better. that's why Lloyd Christmas came into play, even though it had nothing to do with the movie. Maybe Lloyd Christmas was in the original script as something important for a name to be, because that's a really specific last name. <laughs> for a movie that's being released in December? Well, I mean, like, I guess it has nothing to do with... The character at all it's just lloyd christmas so i expected something to come along to be like this is why his last name is christmas but oh okay happened. gotcha yeah. right along the lines of characters named ducky you know you expect them to mean something but they don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well if you are blessed and have never seen this movie <laughs> and you don't actually know what it's about imdb gives a really really <laughs> Short one-liner. The cross-country <laughs> adventures of two good-hearted but incredibly stupid friends. And I call shenanigans on that. And I'm going to say this is the cross-country adventures of two really shitty and incredibly stupid friends. Yes. Um, I concur. Well done. Yeah. See, I am not holding this one close to my chest at all. I think everybody already knows. I did not enjoy this movie. <laughs> Um, oh, goodness. Well called out. They, there's nothing good hearted about these two. There is not. I, there is not I one good hearted thing cannot. about them. <laughs> uh, before we jump into that, do you want to tell us how you watched it, Mandy? Because I know that you were really excited for it. So you went out and scoured all the video stores. Yeah, I went, I went to Blockbuster. <laughs> um, yeah, no. um, it is sadly not available in any of the streaming subscription services here in the u.s and it's only available to rent so yeah <laughs> that's well, not true you, you could have <laughs> bought it <laughs> you could have bought it and it could be in your permanent collection <laughs> right <laughs> like it is in all of ours <laughs> so i bought it <laughs> on amazon prime and i uh i did so in standard definition because it w like i knew i was going to watch it at least twice and I knew that I wasn't going to have time to watch it twice in 24 hours and I also knew that I even if I had time <laughs> I probably wouldn't watch it twice in 24 <laughs> hours <laughs> no matter how much you like it twice in 24 hours is quite a bit right um yeah I've owned this dvd for decades so I'm good there but I, I did actually forget to bring my dvd to where I was this weekend so I actually rented it on amazon as well <laughs> <laughs> Amazon Prime is like, how are we still making money off of this thing? Yeah. And because people forget their DVDs all the time. Okay, so uh, Mandy, you said that you're not too into stupid humor. So I'm really curious how um, how familiar you were with all of the aspects of this movie. Fairly Brothers and Jim Carrey, like they kind of scream stupid humor. Uh, Jeff Daniels was a like more considered a more serious actor before this. But was there anything that you were familiar with? I had to look up the Fairley Brothers because I hadn't actually heard of them. But it turns out I have seen a few of their movies. Um, I have seen Kingpin. I have seen that other Jim Carrey classic, Me, Myself, and Irene. <laughs> which, Even I'm shuddering right now. <laughs> oddly enough, I enjoyed that movie. What? Oh, it's like just, high I'm, school I'm me kidding. really liked that movie. I don't know why. Um, and apparently they also did Shallow How, which was my first experience with Jack Black. Okay. Jim Carrey, shockingly enough, I've seen almost everything that he's done, starting back with Ace Ventura, um, The Mask, and then like he had a run of like good movies like Liar Liar and The Truman Show. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned Me, Myself, and Irene. He did The Grinch. I love his version of The Grinch. 
uh, The Majestic is fantastic. Uh, Bruce Almighty, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Fun with Dick and Jane, Horton Hears a Who, okay. Christmas Carol. See, I have seen a lot of Jim Carrey. It's ridiculous. And he has a new movie coming out that I can't wait to see. I cannot remember what it's called, but it looks really good. Yeah. And then Jeff Daniels. I believe you. <laughs> you believe me or you don't? Yeah, I can't remember what it's called either. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Jeff Daniels, less... Um, familiar with like I know his face and I know his name I just haven't seen a ton of his stuff Um, when I think of Jeff Daniels I think of the intro of the first episode of Newsroom because that speech that he gives is just fantastic there is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world we're seventh in literacy 27th in math 22nd in science 49th in life expectancy 178th in infant mortality third in median household income number four in labor force and number four in exports we lead the world in only three categories number of incarcerated citizens per capita number of adults who believe angels are real and defense spending where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined 25 of whom are allies now none of this is the fault of a 20 year old college student but you nonetheless are without a doubt a member of the worst period generation period ever period so when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world i don't know what the fuck you're talking about and i have a really hard time reconciling his character in this movie with that character it just <laughs> doesn't work but he's also in arachnophobia fly away home pleasantville and more recently the martian and jazzy you put a note here about speed he is in speed have you seen that i have seen it but i don't remember anybody in it other than keanu reeves and sandra bullock so oh. well it's hard to remember that he is the he's the detective that's trying to find the bomber And so I remember it vividly because, first of all, his name in Speed is Harry. (laughs) And and he's the one who, oh, well, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, so close your ears. Um, I remember it because there is a camera shot of him walking into the bomber's house. And then um, he sees on the wall that the house is set up. And all of a sudden you see a close-up of his face and his lip quivers. And then he exploded into so okay um so yeah jeff daniels is in speed (laughs) yeah he was in the like opening scene of that and like hanging from the elevator shaft when he does the pop quiz hot shot right yeah that's him i forgot about Hmm. it's been a while since i've seen speed his inclusion in this movie was kind of out of the blue on this one because up until this movie he'd been considered a more serious actor right um and i guess it was jim carrey who did a lot of a lot of rallying to actually get him Mm -hmm. because the fairly brothers wanted to cast a comedy duo and jim carrey kept pushing to have quote a serious actor (laughs) basically to ground him and keep him from being insane on set all the time oh not sure that works yeah (laughs) i'm not sure either but jeff daniels has said that um, for the first week of filming, they actually didn't film any of their scenes together because they were so ready to just fire Jeff Daniels and oh. they didn't want to have to reshoot stuff. So <laughs> they were filming all separate scenes. And then after watching the dailies, they decided, ah, oh, he can stay. So I read that Jim Carrey was paid $7 million for this movie because he had already had some successes. And because they were so against Jeff Daniels, they paid him $50,000 hoping that he wouldn't take it. (laughs) I read that same thing. (laughs) And I feel like it didn't work. (laughs) I love that he took it because it's kind of like he's just saying, well, screw you guys. I'm going to show you. (laughs) Yeah, this is going to be fun. Come on. I'm going to get to pee on Jim Carrey. (laughs) I really, really hope he got a percentage of the royalties on this, though. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, this is a um, uh, fairly, what would you say, a dumb movie? Um, What's your experiences with dumb movies? Um, I'm not sure there's anything else similar to this movie out there that I could have experience with. And if there is, dear God, I never want to see it. (laughs) <laughs> right everybody start adding to the list i mean no don't do that that's well, mean you have recently <laughs> added uh, some dumber comedies to your repertoire though right like it's something you're more accepting of than you used to be just not on this scale <laughs> yeah, yeah well not on this scale correct there i mean right i i now like what i deem stupid humor but when i say stupid humor i'm thinking of things like talladega nights or blades of glory 
not right. dumb and dumber. <laughs> well, I'm just I the reason I ask that is because if uh in 10 years you go back and watch Talladega Nights with someone that's never seen it, they might have the same response. That's fair. That is yeah. absolutely fair. But then I can just show them Dumb and Dumber and they'll completely understand why Talladega Nights is an acceptable form of humor and Dumb and Dumber <laughs> is not. <laughs> That makes me curious at what point there was like the turning point when you decided there's no way I'm going to like this. Because when I watch Talladega Nights and I watch Dumb and Dumber, I see no difference. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't believe that. All right. Mandy liked Ace Ventura, but she hates Dumb and Dumber. What? I, they're the same movie to me. <sighs> Let's see. I got to. Oh, man. Like even before before Lloyd got home, like after he's stolen the suitcase. Like, so my, I have two lines right in a row and I, I, in my thoughts doc, and I I don't remember exactly when they both happened, but the first one is, is this supposed to be funny yet? (laughs) (laughs) And then the next line is when he says to, to his friend, did he say he fell off a jetway again? So, I mean, pretty early in the movie, I was already like, okay, this isn't funny. Okay. See, therein lies the difference because, I had my I had my questioning ears up the first time I watched it and I wasn't sure and then as soon as he said he fell off the jetway again I was all in. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. that, I had the that's same the moment responses. that I went, okay, now it's funny. <laughs> yeah, that was really clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I remember specifically watching that that moment the first time through again. Uh just a couple of weeks ago and looking up at my oldest daughter and her kind of like rolling her eyes and smiling at the same time. Like, Oh, that's a dad joke. <laughs> and that's really good. <laughs> uh, I think we've unlocked Brandon's love of the movie. <laughs> I think so. It's all the dad jokes. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So Mandy, um, <laughs> It is. Wait, I don't have to ask that question. <laughs> yeah. Did you enjoy this movie? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. It was my favorite. No. <laughs> oh my God, I will never get those two hours back in my whole life. <laughs> I'm sad. Okay, so what put this movie in a different category for you? Why did you hate it as opposed to love the other stupid humor like Bill and Ted and Talladega Nights? Oh, that's a really good question. I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that the characters themselves are irredeemable. Like, I, I can't find one good thing to say about Lloyd and Harry mm. at all. And and it started at the very beginning. I mean, Lloyd is creepy when uh. he, <laughs> he meets Mary. And, like, then when they decide to leave, he tapes the head back on the parakeet <laughs> and sells it to a blind kid. <laughs> Like, there was just no coming back from that. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, As as the mother of a child who is obsessed with scotch tape, I I was actually impressed with the engineering of the bird's head. I'm (laughs) so... um, That's actually one of my favorite jokes. Uh, Yeah. Where they... I mean, not, not, not that we're exploiting a blind child. But I I feel like that kind of joking is what makes it work for me because it's so ridiculous. It's so over the top. There's not even a chance that we're making fun of anybody because it's so pointless. Like Well and like it's yeah. not when it happens when he says that in the van, you're like, Oh, that's kinda of disturbing and weird. Just kinda of, kinda of like he is the whole awkwardness at the airport. It's the same uncomfortable feeling that I get. But when they call back with the current affair music and and you know you hear it going off in the background and you're like oh i i recognize that tone from a show that i used to watch all the time back then and then they're like <laughs> they they break the scandal of the dead parakeet that was sold to a blind child like that callback is incredible and it's my favorite part of the whole movie for sure okay i think i think jokes like that are what actually mandy i'm kind of in your camp i usually don't watch stupid humor i usually don't enjoy stupid humor um for example, the Three Stooges, why do they exist? Like, there's no point to this sort of thing. <laughs> but see, I loved but, the Three Stooges when I was a kid. Okay, so that was the wrong example. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I like about the jokes in this movie is that they don't just make the joke. They find the way to take it one step further. And 
I don't know why that makes me laugh. Like Brandon said, the the joke about the bird. First of all, when I, when the thug is going for the bird, I'm horrified, like fully horrified. Please don't touch the bird. Poor, poor birdie. Um, but the joke about his head fell off makes me laugh <laughs> at Harry. And But when Harry pauses and finishes it off with, you know, he was pretty old... <laughs> I, I don't know why that extra step makes the joke okay. And then, like Brandon said, the the callback way back when to make it, to finish it off with the current affair, it, it feels like the commitment to the joke is just so desperate. It, I'm not saying it's good. It's desperate. They are clinging to any laugh that they can get out of this. And they're fully committed to making sure that there's a couple of guffaws per joke. So... Eh, they got him from me. And the other thing about, about this movie, too, is we did mention that it has a cult following. And just uh, on Friday, I was in psychology class at the college, and, and something came up. And we were talking about dying things because it's uh, like lifespan development or something. And <laughs> I turned to the guy next to me who's of a similar age, and I was like, remember that part? <laughs> dumb and dumber when they sell the dead bird to the blind kid and we just started like giggling through the rest of the class and at one point one of us is like i just thought it was a really quiet bird (laughs) and we're like crying (laughs) so i there's obviously a lot of uh just memories tied up in this for us like there will be for talladega nights when people tell you in 10 years how stupid it is yeah i i think this is a really good point (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I think the other thing about this one is that it relies so heavily on potty humor. Yes. Both literally and figuratively. Like, all of the humor is just, it's <laughs> gross. Like, there's three or four separate bathroom jokes. There's the peeing in the beer bottles and, mm. like, getting that spilled everywhere. There's the cop drinking the pee. There's yeah. the, the poop in Mary's house. There's Harry peeing on Lloyd while they're driving in Aspen on the bike. <laughs> You know, this is the humor that this that carries this movie is, is bathroom humor, and it, I mean it's not all specifically bathroom because you've got the waitress blowing the bubbles in his soda, and then he still drinks it, and you've got the parakeet and mm-hmm. the brown loogie. Oh my god, going uh, in his hamburger. Yes. I, yeah, I just I can't like that. I think that's the main reason I don't like it because for like. Stupid humor can be funny. Stupid, gross humor just grosses me out and it doesn't I, – I don't enjoy it. And so I think right. because this movie relied so heavily on that specific kind of humor above all else, yeah, I had a really hard time with it. Yeah, it does come from the Beavis and Butthead era too. So Definitely. <laughs> it's probably why it sold so well. Yeah, I think that's probably a, a direct result of, of the age that you were when you watched it. Because I also cannot stand bathroom humor in general. I love <laughs> um, it. <laughs> but when I'm, you know, of course you do. <laughs> but, but I was, you know, a teenager when I watched this, and so that's that's the age that I was dismissing that kind of thing. And to this day, when I think about Dumb and Dumber, those jokes when they pop in my head, I'm still grossed out by them. I still turn my head when the cop drinks the urine. I'm <laughs> still super annoyed that I can hear the beer bottles full of pee clinking as they drive down the road, like the whole time. I'm like that still grosses me out. I still like run away from the whole toilet scene thing. Um, but I watched it when I was a kid, and it didn't bug me then. And so now when I watch it, I just kind of ignore those parts and watch the other jokes instead, and I still laugh at them. Like, I was surprised how many times I was laughing out loud. Even I've seen this movie 10 or 15 times, and I'm still laughing out loud at it, which is very unusual for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Love what you love. <laughs> uh, we have to do it. Yeah, yeah speaking of, uh, <laughs> of love, Mandy, is there, is there anything redeemable about this movie for you? What, what did you enjoy, if anything? I came into this recording fully intending to say there was nothing in this movie that I enjoyed, so you guys have to carry this section. But there is one thing I will give it. I can't wait. One thing and one thing only. Harry bought all of those dogs their own sandwich at the beginning, and I thought that was adorable. (laughs) Yep. Uh, The footlong. (laughs) Footlong. Yeah. Um, Beyond that, I got nothing. I am sorry. I... 
I couldn't. You you didn't even like the dog van, huh? The shaggin wagon. Mm mm. <laughs> I did see in your notes that you were questioning why he got to keep it if he got fired, but I think he just lost all his clients. Is all. It was a private yeah. contractor, you know. Okay. At some point, he made a comment about he used his life savings to turn his van okay. into a giant dog. So, okay. I missed. And that was one of the weaker jokes, too. The FBI agent saying, yeah, they're driving a 94 Labradoodle or whatever it was. <laughs> whatever animal, I can't remember. <laughs> sheepdog? Yeah. I think it was Sheepdog, yeah. 1984 Sheepdog okay. is what they said. But <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think that that beginning with the dogs is like the high point of the movie. Oh, that was like the <laughs> first rough. two minutes. So it wasn't the most annoying sound ever. <laughs> no. Although I, I will say they use that, that bit in the trailer for the movie. And so oh, I was familiar right. with that. Like I was expecting that bit. Yeah. Um, that's honestly the only thing I remember from the trailer of this movie from way back. God, I'm so old. 1994. Oh, you remember the trailer? I, well, I remember, I remember that part of the trailer. <laughs> That's about all there was to the trailer. We went back and watched it. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, there's not much else. Oh, well, that's probably why that's what I remember. All right, Jazzy, you have written a wall of text here, so you clearly <laughs> like this movie a lot. So I like this movie a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know? <laughs> Um, I started writing down like my favorite moments, my favorite scenes, and I realized it's a real problem because this is just part of the fabric of my growing up. And I had no idea how much I use this movie in my daily vernacular. Right. I probably quote this almost as much as I quote Friends, which is sadly and embarrassing, um, or sadly embarrassing. But yeah, they're the standards. We use standards like, you know, goodbye, my love. And, like, when we're about to leave the house, my son, we've trained him. He's five, and we've gotten him to. <laughs> he knows that you leave either with goodbye, my love, or have fun storming the castle. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> those those are definitely standards. And, oh, my goodness, so many of these one-liners I just I, I laugh at. I, there's no time to say them all. Um, but I do appreciate how they take them to the next level instead of just saying one thing. Well, not always. Sometimes they just say one thing, like uh, Harry's nice set of hooters. <laughs> that was kind of obvious and out there. Um, but so I, I do love the silly one-liners. I love, again, this is not something I would normally go for, but I think Lloyd's dream sequence is so funny. <laughs> it's it's just so, so base. <laughs> I mean... You watch that short little sequence, and you know absolutely everything you need to know about Lloyd. You also obviously know that he is a really terrible human being. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's nothing about that. It just solidifies your your thoughts, Mandy, that he's absolutely irredeemable. Yes. <laughs> Every time you see another another turn to what he would find exciting, it's like, oh, you're just disgusting. You're all disgusting. What's wrong with you guys? But I, I'm also very impressed with Lauren Holly in that scene because she never cracks a smile not even once she plays that fully straight so i i'm i like the performance she gave there but i'm pretty sure i've heard mandy say so you're telling me there's a chance maybe which (laughs) makes me wonder if you liked one (laughs) line more than you thought Okay, or you so didn't know where it was coming from. <laughs> me using a line from a movie I had never seen before cannot be held against me. No, but it does explain yeah. why you're covering it on your show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> its influence is far-reaching. <laughs> yeah, I completely forgot that that was from this movie. I think that was a bit that was in the trailer, too. Oh, possibly, for sure. I, I will say, um, as far as this being interwoven into pop culture um the i i spent 20 years in food service in the coast guard and like six billion times i've heard what's the soup du jour (laughs) with you know my standard response of it's the soup of the day and then whoever it is is always like oh that sounds good i'll have that every time oh you actually do that huh (laughs) yeah every time and it, it never it never like i I played it just now like it gets old, but it doesn't get old. It's it's still like, it's not really laugh out loud funny. It's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. 
we both know where we're going with this. Um, <laughs> so it's enough to know that you both have really questionable taste in humor. It's a bonding Maybe. experience. Except, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> Except that... We're going to connect on the most base level possible like, with this movie. Yeah, these, these things are interwoven through life. So, like, for example, one of my favorite moments is when they both come home, they're both fired, and and Lloyd leads off with, you know, got fired, blah, blah, blah. And then Harry comes up with, I got fired, and Lloyd is like, oh, my, you are such a loser. Like... <laughs> just completely disregarding the fact that he also got fired. And I thought that I did that constantly making fun of that or like calling back that movie because I would do that. I, I'd be watching a sporting event, like an Olympic athlete who has like 2% body fat, uh, doesn't necessarily make a mistake, but doesn't do something as well as someone else and gets like a 8.6 instead of a 9.0. And I'm like, Oh my God, what a loser. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing it for, like by myself in the corner of the bar, and other people are looking at me like I'm a freak, but they're also appreciating it, I hope. Sorry, guys, if you're not. But where I'm actually getting that from is Will Ferrell, who does it years later in Wedding Crashers. And I didn't realize that until I went to send you a gift this week, Mandy. <laughs> oh, okay. And I was yeah, like, that's, okay. that's I who I'm imitating. Either. And he's imitating Dumb and Dumber. And Got it. Uh, yeah, so like it's... It's just there. It's a base current of pop culture, and I'm sorry that you had to go through it for your for your show. I really am too, but I'm I'm glad you did because I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys suck, and you set me up. That's all I gotta say. Maybe a little bit. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I I do also imitate Harry in life when I get into a little. It's not ever a snowball fight because we don't get a lot of snow here, but maybe like a water splashing fight in the pool where I get like super angry face and act like I'm going to like demolish someone in front of me. (laughs) That all comes from him too, because that snowball fight is great. (laughs) Lauren Holly was pretty great in that. Like the look on her face, she just like, she looks hurt and then confused and then like, right. I am going to get this dude. (laughs) Yeah. I, I feel like she sold it. I feel like she sold all of her scenes and I actually bought her. As unbelievable as the movie was, I actually felt like I was buying her performance probably more than the other two. But I buy her acting. I don't buy the character itself because I can't. Oh, no. I can't (laughs) see a world in which she would ever be interested in either Lloyd or Harry. Why she would spend an entire date day with Harry when she has a husband who's been kidnapped? Like, well, see, nothing I, I about like this that's, makes sense. <laughs> that's the thing. You're trying to make sense of it. See, the, you have to open with, there's not a world in which people like Lloyd and Harry actually exist. So if you start there, or at least, God, I hope this is true. <laughs> <laughs> if you start there, you can just dismiss everything, completely suspend reality, and laugh at all the poop jokes. Yeah, also, I don't think Shit. that she had any intentions of that being, like, a romantic thing. Um, she got forced into it because... Because Phoebe's mom made her. Yeah, <laughs> Phoebe's oh, mom made her. that's right. But, and and she, she wasn't up for it, but the, she was also being told that she needed to get out and relax because, she, like, the stresses of the world were going to kill her otherwise. And she she took advice, and uh, I don't know, they weren't, like, holding hands. They Like, she never – obviously, Harry and Lloyd both thought that she was in love with them and it was meant to be, or at least that right. there was a chance. Um, but – I don't. I don't think she was playing it that way. She was just like, "Okay, get me out of this place. Uh, let's take your car." <laughs> okay, it's a really nice car. All right. Um, I do love that scene when they schedule the snow date because of the tuxedos. <laughs> Which, <laughs> oh, the tuxedos. The tuxedos lasted so long. The first time that I was an adult of drinking age and saw those at a Halloween party, I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> those lasted long enough in pop culture that there was just an episode this season of um fresh off the boat which is a, a sitcom on abc right now and the kids it's set in the 90s the kids were going to prom and they all agreed to wear orange and blue dumb and dumber tuxes nice wow. to prom. like it was and i do remember like some friends and 
I was not part of this group, but some friends were protesting the whole prom idea when I was in high school, and they wore their orange and blue Dumb and Dumber tuxes <laughs> to the prom. <laughs> so, yeah, they're they're pretty stellar. Okay. And if I could have that top hat, I probably would. <laughs> and then my kid would probably wear it and, like, decorate it with markers and ruin the whole thing, but it would still be fun. <laughs> Fun. I don't think that word means what you think it means, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I do feel like uh, I feel like this movie is a little longer than it needs to be. I mean, because even I, about by the time they pull into Colorado, I'm pretty fatigued <laughs> with it, and. The, and the, the plot turn that it takes there, like the different focus, instead of it just being about the two guys and their silly antics when they bring in Mary, I feel like that just slows everything down. And that's when the jokes really stop being innocent, goofy jokes and almost creepier and grosser. Because you, you feel like they're doing something weird to Mary, even though it's just, uh, I mean, they're oblivious to everything. Yeah. <laughs> these, these two guys really are that dumb. But it, it still just feels... I don't even know if there's if there's a point to them to it feeling like creepy or predatory. I just think it's boring at that point, and they probably could have stopped somewhere around Nebraska, and it would have worked <laughs> better for me. Okay. I did love that their their entire trek out there that both the good guys and the bad guys thought they were mastermind criminals as they followed in their <laughs> footsteps. <laughs> uh, yeah, that makes me. I'm guessing from your from your thoughts, Doc Mandy, that you didn't see the FBI agent coming no i did not realize that she was in with the cops um in retrospect i should have seen it because they like they showed her right after they had the scene of all the cops talking about how they were driving on the interstate blah 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 um but she played it so well like a, a dumb broken up moving the aspen character that fit in with this movie that uh I, I didn't see it coming until the very when when they did the reveal. I was like, right. oh, well, that I makes actually, a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I had actually forgotten all about it too. <laughs> it, it I I me. remember not not knowing it either. I mean, it made perfect sense that some random person was seeing them again all the way across. I mean, we saw sea bass in like four different states, <laughs> so why wouldn't we see this chick who's an FBI agent? She's not even credited as FBI agent. In the credits, I think they call her Athletic Beauty. Oh my gosh! In the actual wow. credits, yeah, they don't. Even God, this movie her. is so so misogynistic. It's awful. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, uh, we haven't even talked about that part of it yet. See, see Lloyd's dream sequence. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the hot tub sequence between Lloyd and Harry, like. I don't know if misogyny is the right word for that since he's talking to a man, but he's talking about the man being a woman and the things he wants to do to him. (laughs) I was just watching that scene in horror. Oh, see, I got completely distracted during that scene because I was trying to remember if we ever got confirmed that Lloyd had actually slept with his old girlfriend. Because it seemed to me like that was a really obvious thing that was going to pay off later, that Lloyd was recognizing the name. And it did he, pay off later. He was actually the cause of their breakup, but um, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it kind of did pay off later, so. Wait, it did? And did I fall asleep? Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's why Harry did what he did. That's why Harry lied to him and went out with Mary, with Mary that day and, and told him that Mary was going to meet him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, see? Like, I was distracted by that cool tub. Yeah. It looked really... It looked really cute. It looked really uncomfortable for two grown men to be in. <laughs> I kind of wanted one, though. <laughs> See, like like I said, about when they get to Colorado, I start to check out a little bit. <laughs> okay. It's, it slows down. Yeah, and it was a ridiculously long movie, um, especially for yeah, a 1994 long. movie. Not, like 1994 comedies generally clocked in at like an hour and a half. Right. And this one was a solid two hours. Yeah. Uh, solid, Did, fairly painted. So you're saying it's solid. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. It's definitely true. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So I I should say, uh, I, I put this in your notes, Mandy. I, 
I feel like I should admit that in like it's kind of sadistic of me to say this, but part of my enjoyment of this movie is experiencing it with other people, whether or not they've seen it before or whether or not they like it, because my husband and I, obviously we had not seen it at the same time, but we pulled it out and we both laughed the whole way through it. Um, and so, <laughs> but even when someone hates it, it's kind of fun. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying I'm glad that you were like tortured the whole way through it. I, I always, I, I offer it to people with a genuine hope that they'll laugh at it. Right. Um, but watching people hate it is kind of just as much fun as um, watching people love it. <laughs> so, so it, again, I'm not saying I'm glad you were miserable, um, but watching, reading your thoughts, Doc, did make me laugh just as much as the movie did. So <laughs> I would like to say thank that you for that. So but, messed up. <laughs> it's so 100% on. Everything in your thought stock is absolutely true. Um, and it's just fun to watch, uh, to take that journey with other people. Uh-huh. So I, I think this movie is made specifically for two reasons. I think it's made to make people who like stupid humor laugh. But I also think it's specifically to torture people who don't like stupid humor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So... Um, to that end, I think it's kind of a successful movie. But, I mean, hopefully you were at least watching it with someone else who was enjoying it. Maybe it was a little more pleasant. Oh, no. I watched this movie all by myself. <gasps> okay, that's the wrong way to go, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was home all by myself watching this movie. Oh. So, oh, it was... herself. Oh, it was an interesting experience. Suffering yes. That is exactly oh, right, okay. yes. Um, I think there were a couple of times, like, I paused it to see how much time I had left. And at one point, it was exactly <laughs> halfway through. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, my God, how is this movie not almost over yet? And I've still got a whole hour to go. What is wrong with this movie? <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, our listener or your listeners need to go through your uh, recommendations list. Uh, the list of giant things for Mandy to see and maybe make notes on ones that should also require copious amounts of alcohol (laughs) while you are watching them. (laughs) Or at least not watching them alone. (laughs) Because, you know, we've had a couple movies on the show that I think I would have experienced much differently had I not watched them alone. For example, Monty Python. Oh, yeah, that one needs a crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there, there are movies that you just experience wholly differently if you watch them by yourself or with a crowd because you get that energy from the crowd and you can like if I had watched it with the two of you I at the very least would have laughed at you guys <laughs> okay <laughs> right <laughs> I might not have laughed at the movie but I would have laughed at you guys <laughs> so it, I would have at least enjoyed myself instead of wishing I had not lost those two hours right yeah yeah I think this is a good communal experience <laughs> right <laughs> Um, I I wish my experience had been communal, actually. (laughs) So is there anything else that we need to discuss about Dumb and Dumber? Um, I have a question because I'm kind of shocked that Brandon hasn't brought this up yet, uh, especially since Jim Carrey and Lauren Hawley did actually get married after this. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if anyone paused for a moment to think about what Mary's name would have been if she'd actually married Lloyd. (laughs) Well, they did specifically call it out in the movie, so... (laughs) (laughs) Feels like Brandon needed to like <laughs> land on that one for a while. <laughs> yeah, I I didn't know. That's why I asked like why why the random name? And maybe in ah. the original script they got married and it would have been Merry Christmas. Wouldn't it have been great? Sorry. Yeah. Hmm. Well Lloyd I mean Lloyd did walk around saying Merry Christmas for a little did bit. He? Because he was he contemplating the two of them getting married. He did. He did. Part. I watched it twice. I fell and I asleep forgot. during that part too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think I was too busy laughing at the toilet scene. Oh wait, I didn't laugh at that at all. <laughs> like I don't remember when it was, but I, the reason I noticed it is because first he he just randomly said "Merry Christmas," and I'm sitting here thinking nothing in this whole movie has given the indication that it's Christmas time, so I don't understand. Hmm. And then he kept talking, and he was like, uh, Mrs. Lloyd Christmas or something like that. And I was like, oh, her name would be Merry Christmas. So they, they did specifically call it out, but it was just kind of in, in a brief moment. See, I think this proves what you need to do in order to like this movie is you need to be able to block out certain things. Because... <laughs> Basically, you need to not pay attention is, is what I'm no, hearing. There's been at least three times that Brandon and, I, Brandon and I, who both love it, 
have like completely missed really obvious jokes. <laughs> like, why didn't they say that? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, that's block so off funny. half of it or okay. block out half of it and you'll enjoy it again. I, you know, give it another go. Just try. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. And uh, we had some folks on Twitter who absolutely agree with me and not you guys. And I'm sorry. Um, but shout out to Kim at Mets Girl who said this was the worst movie. I attempt to forget I have ever heard of it, let alone watched it, which I have now been reminded of. Hashtag where is the blame? Where is the brain bleach? <laughs> and then she said, consequently, I am so sorry. You have been subjected to this terrible movie. <sighs> and I, too, oh, Kim, you're the am best. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Kelly, my, my co-host on Southern Fried Pop Culture, all she said was, no, no, just no. Dumb and Dumber is the only movie I've ever gotten up and left a theater from. I think I left oh, after whoa. about 20 minutes. Just <laughs> no. <laughs> oh Kelly oh no and Kelly we were like peers I feel like we were the same age when we were watching this movie I'm so sorry so you're saying you were still awake <laughs> <laughs> so I feel vindicated I'm not the only person in the world who hates this movie but I am thrilled that there are people in the world who love it otherwise we wouldn't have had this conversation something for everyone <laughs> <laughs> oh indeed well, if you would like to join the conversation and tell me how much you hated this movie, like I did, you can use the hashtag <laughs> PC Deprived on Twitter. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Eloquent Gushing. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Mandy K. Uh, I am on Twitter at Jawsbot7. You can find our podcast network, Moo Podcast, on Twitter at Moo Podcast. You can find our flagship podcast, Moo Point, a friend's podcast on any of your podcast apps it's lovely and a lot of it is jazzy trying to convince me that i like something that i don't liar <laughs> you do. <laughs> and you know it's working just as well for mandy today as it normally does for brandon so <laughs> it's a party over there at moo point <laughs> uh brandon did you say where you were on twitter oh i'm at shoe size 38 Pop Culturally Deprived is 100% funded by listeners like you through our Patreon page. So any amount you can give, even a dollar a month, will give you access to exclusive content and also help to support our network and help us develop new shows. To find out more, visit patreon.com slash eloquent gushing. And if you really like this thing that we do, please remember to subscribe in iTunes or I guess they call it Apple Podcasts now and also recommend us to a friend. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest news and announcements, please subscribe to our weekly newsletter, which you can find on our homepage, eloquentgushing.com. I'll be back next week with another episode of Pop Culturally Deprived, where I'll talk about Braveheart with Alan of Shadows and Shamblers. Until next time, I'm Mandy Kay. I'm Brandon Size. And I am running at an incredible rate of speed. <laughs> and yes, I'm actually doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you are. Oh my god, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dog thinks I'm insane. <laughs> oh, I love like you guys. He's sneezing at me. He's so weirded out right now. <laughs> Pop Culturally Deprived is an Eloquent Gushing production. For more information, visit eloquentgushing.com or find us on Twitter at Eloquent Gushing.